Okay, so can you calculate the area of this figure? Well, actually, I think most of you are going to be able to figure this problem out. And there's different ways you can uh, kind of approach this problem. But how many of you are going to take the easiest way? Well, of course, uh, only you'll know that answer because I'm going to show you what I believe is the easiest way. But there's other methods you could take that are really not all that bad. But there's one particular method that I think is the quickest way to figure this out. Now, before we get into this problem, let me just make sure that uh, this is crystal clear because this figure is not showing uh, a very important aspect of this problem. And that is these things right here, these angles, not these things, these angles are all right angles okay these are all 90 degree angles and it's not in the figure but i am telling you that they're all 90 degree angles and that does uh, have a, a major kind of uh, impact in terms of calculating the area of course i'll explain to you why in just one second but uh, anyways here is your problem we have this uh, kind of rectangular figure with these dimensions 10 20 11 6 3 4 and 3 that's all the information so if you can calculate the area, and by the way, feel free to use a calculator. Put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem. And I'm going to do it in a couple of different ways. One, which I believe is the easiest way. And then I'll show you some other approaches that you could take to figure this thing out as well. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now one thing here, I'm going to show you the answer. But notice that our measurements here uh, don't have any specific units of measure. In other words, we don't have like things like millimeters or inches. Because if we did, for example, if everything was in millimeters, then the area would be in millimeters squared. Or if everything was in inches, um, area would be measured in inches squared. So remember, area is always measured in uh, units of measure squared. But when you don't have any uh, particular unit of measure, you're just going to basically... Uh, you know, write the number down. And let's go ahead and take a look at the actual answer. What is the area of this figure? Well, the area is 250 units squared, whatever those units might be. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you can calculate the area of all kinds of crazy looking figures. And uh, this particular figure doesn't maybe have a specific name, but really what we're talking about is uh, kind of a rectangular shape. And this is the key to this problem, is that we're gonna, we need to kind of split this uh, figure up in multiple rectangles. Now, of course, we could do it this way, or we could do it possibly this way, but here is the deal. Whatever approach you take, uh, you're gonna have to um, obviously split this figure up. So nice job. And for those of you that are a little bit confused, don't uh, worry. This will make sense in about a minute or two. Okay, so here is the deal. I want to find the area of this particular figure. Now, I did indicate that we're dealing with right angles here. So that means that we have uh, basically uh, a bunch of uh, rectangles. Now, how many rectangles you want to create out of this figure, it's really up to you. But typically, right here, most people... Are going to see three rectangle situations right you might your eyes might draw you to this and then to this this is one way to look at it now if uh, this is the case we could find the area of this and then this particular small rectangle the area of this uh, rectangle and the area of this rectangle now of course uh, we're going to have to get the measurements of these, and we already have the measurements of some of these, but that is not the most um, kind of efficient way to do this problem, okay? Now, what I believe is the most efficient way is if we kind of uh, continue this down and we look at this as one big square, okay, this one big square right here, if we could get the area of that rectangle and then subtract away these two uh, smaller rectangles, well, that's going to be the area of our figure, okay? And this is actually going to require a little bit less calculations. But uh, 
Again, you know, before you start any problem, you want to think about the problem. Now, because we're dealing with rectangles, we need to review what is the area of a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, so here is my strategy, okay? I'm gonna find the area of the big rectangle and then I'm gonna subtract away the area of the two smaller triangles. So let's go back up here and see. So uh, I'm calling this big thing right here, I'm calling this the big uh, rectangle. And then these two right here are the smaller rectangles. The only thing I have to do is figure out what the dimension, uh, the full dimensions of the bigger triangle is because I don't have, I have the length, right here being 20, I just don't have the width, but that's not that difficult. So let's go ahead and actually uh, calculate this out. And again, uh, feel free to use a calculator. All right, so uh, here is my big rectangle. I have its length 20. Now the width here, if you can see, I have 10 uh, units right here and then four down here. So that 10 and four is gonna give me 14, but because we're dealing with right angles, uh, you know, and rectangles, then this other side should be 14 as well. So let's check. I have 11 right here, and then I have three down here for the width. So 11 and three is 14. So now I feel pretty confident that I have the actual dimensions of that big uh, rectangle, which of course would be 20 by 14. Now the two smaller rectangles, it's pretty easy to see. This right here is a three by four rectangle and this one right here is a three by six. So a uh, pretty straightforward problem for this point. So let's go ahead and see the calculation. So the area of our figure is going to be that big triangle minus these two smaller triangles. So the big triangle again was 20 by 14, right? So remember back up here, we had 20 for the length and 14 uh, for the width. And then uh, we're gonna subtract away a three by four, which is this rectangle here. And this one is a three by six rectangle. Okay, so you could, you know, basically you need some sort of a model or um, approach. And um, if you're doing a problem like this, and let's suppose this is on a, a test or an exam, you know, write things down so your teacher can understand your calculations. Because if you just do a bunch of calculations and get the wrong answer, your teacher's not gonna know how you were thinking about the problem. Okay, so break things down step by step. All right, so here is the big triangle. Here is our two smaller triangles. So this is gonna be 20 times 14 is 280 minus three times uh, four, which of course is 12. And six times three is 18. When I do all this lovely uh, arithmetic, 280 minus 12 minus 18 is 250. Okay, so pretty simple uh, problem. Hopefully most of you saw it this way, but if you didn't, uh, it's no big deal, okay? I, I think um, the thing to learn here is before you start a problem, especially if you believe you're seeing like the easiest approach, always try to put the brakes on yourself, your enthusiasm, because oftentimes, you know, we get enthusiastic about something and we just do something quickly. And it turns out that we actually took you know, a wrong step or we miss something. So even if you feel good about your strategy, you know what I'm saying, just stop, pause, think about it a little more time. Uh, patience is really a virtue, especially when it comes to mathematics. Okay, so let's take a look at another approach to do this problem. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you this real quick. And uh, first thing I wanna ask you is if you wouldn't mind, consider subscribing to my channel, okay? Now, this is important not only for me, but really my objectives, which is to reach as many people as possible that are interested in math or need help in mathematics. My number one goal is to stop people from giving up uh, on mathematics, okay? This is what I've seen uh, throughout my uh, years teaching math, my, uh, many decades, is uh, I've often found people who wanna learn math who come you know, maybe come into my classroom and, they, and they've struggled, okay? And they're almost on the verge of giving up. And then suddenly they start succeeding in math. But all these, uh, you know, all this time before that, they thought they were bad in math or they couldn't do mathematics. And hopefully that's not you. Matter of fact, if it is you, I'm happy that you're watching this video because please do not give up, okay? I'm telling you right now, uh, all of you out there could be very successful in mathematics. Now, by you subscribing, it really does help uh, me reach more people. So thank you so much. If you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell. Now, um, I have a new course, at least for the time of this video, and I built this because I've just gotten so many requests from people who want to go back 
and kind of relearn math. So I've called this uh, new course my Math Skills Rebuilder course. And uh, irrespective of how long you've been away from math, let's say you've been away from math 30, 40, 50 years. Well, uh, even if you took, you know, calculus in college or trigonometry or whatever the case is, you know, you've been away from math that long, you're going to have to do some, you know, review, right? And it's uh, a good idea to start from the basics. So this particular course has basic math and arithmetic. So you can kind of recapture all those uh, skills with the arithmetic, which are, you know, not so trivial, okay, in terms of place value, fractions, decimals, percent, all that kind of stuff. So this particular course uh, starts off with basic math, arithmetic, and then you're going to learn a ton of high school level algebra and geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some basic probability and statistics. So this is going to be a very, or actually is, because you'll find the link to it in the description below. This is a very comprehensive uh, math course. Okay, so if you are interested in math, if you just want to kind of reacquire those skills or prove to yourself that in fact you can uh, learn mathematics, this is the course for you. Again, you'll find a link to it in the description below, uh, along with my other main courses, dedicated courses like geometry, pre-calculus, etc. Okay, so let's get back to the problem. And I uh, kind of indicated that you could look at this problem in a different manner, right? You could have been like, all right, well, I see three rectangles. Maybe you weren't thinking about this big rectangle, but maybe you broke it down in this way, which is not a bad approach as well, because right here, this is three, this is 10. So I have, I could easily calculate the area of this. This is six and this is 11. So I can get, I can calculate the area of this. But at this point, I have to figure out what is the dimensions of this last remaining rectangle. So here I have, this is three and this is six. So I'm gonna have to uh, take this uh, 20, right? And I'm gonna have to basically come up here and this is six here and then this is three here. So this is gonna be six and three, which of course is nine minus this 20, which would be 11. So then I would have to then figure out, all right, this is 10, oh, this is 14. So this particular uh, path is not so bad. Okay, if you saw it in this manner, you'll still get the right answer. But uh, again, you know, when you start um, uh, down a particular method, and if it starts to seem a little bit involved, it's not a, a bad idea to kind of stop again and, uh, you know, kind of review. Hey, am I taking the best approach? I kind of like it uh, this way. So here you are, you're facing a math problem. Okay, so here's a math problem. And you're like, all right, uh, there's different roads I can take, right? You kind of go here, you go here. And this is very common, especially in advanced mathematics. So let's suppose, all right, I'm going to choose this road here to, uh, you know, figure out the solution. Now, if this road starts taking you like this and starts taking you like this and this and this and this and this, uh, well, rather to stay on that road, 99% uh, of the time you took the wrong path. So what you want to do is like, you know what, cut your losses and be like, all right, you know what, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Uh, I learned something about going down this road. Now, what did I learn? You know, what could I do better? Well, you know, try to take another path. And this is, uh, you know, sometimes like trial and error experimentation. This just only comes with experience. That's why it's so critical that if you truly want to learn mathematics, you have to practice. It's not enough to watch a lesson and do one or two problems because you're not going to get enough experience dealing with all different types of situations. Okay. But again, if you did take this approach to figuring this out, that's not that bad because it's not that much of uh, you know, that many more uh, calculations. Some of you uh, may have just you know, simply liked this approach better, and that is perfectly fine. But really, uh, the kind of the main idea or theme of this video is before you, um, you know, really start on one particular, you know, strategy, you know, stop, give yourself some time to really think about it. And if you feel good about it and you feel like, well, I know I can calculate this, I feel good about it, then stick with it, even if it does take you a little bit more time, all right? As long as you're confident in the solution and you kind of break things down, uh, you know, in a nice structured way, then you know what? That's not bad at all. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.